Okay, so uh, we specialise in equine clinical nutrition as a veterinarian. Uh, it's been one of my passions for many, many, many years. Um, seeing firsthand the role that nutrition can play in the management prevention and even the causes of so many things that um, our horses face and we want to be able to help them with. This is a little bit about me that um, I'm a horse vet. I went through Sydney Uni and did a specialist year looking at worm resistance and then a PhD in foals, which is another one of my passions is growing horses and pregnant mares. Uh, and then I worked in, um, in some universities in America, in Newmarket and Cambridge University in, in um, England and was fortunate enough to see firsthand a lot of um, feeding situations at studs and trainers throughout the Middle East and in New Zealand and Japan and Turkey, South Africa. And I think the thing that I learned from that is that we've all got the same problems. It doesn't matter whether your horse is in Turkey or the UAE or England, they all face similar problems. And so um, we can help them with correct nutrition for a lot of those problems. Um, my special areas of interest are developmental orthopaedic diseases, which is all those twisted and crooked little leg problems we can see in foals. Colic because um, it's such a horrible disease. And a recent uh, paper put out by a, um, an equine surgeon in North America said, so he's just a specialist equine colic surgeon, and to him colic is largely a disease of management. So that's another one of my areas of interest, tying up and other performance problems. Laminitis is such a cruel disease, so anything we can learn and do to help our horses there is another one of my special interests. Uh, and that's why we, that's why I began Genquine, so that we can, you know, just sort of bring a veterinary clinical aspect to nutrition. Now we've got a, a range of products in our, in our little stable, which we're all very pleased with and getting some fabulous results. And we also have here our awful feet, which is, um, I'm really excited about this and the responses we're getting, we've done a lot of feeding trials, have been even beyond what on paper and scientifically it, um, it would produce for horses. I made a similar feed in New Zealand, which has been used there for over a decade and by a lot of the leading studs um, and also the same in Japan. And so I'm very excited to be able to bring this to all the horses and everyone in Australia. The really fantastic thing about it and why it's been so done so well on the studs is that it's a principle that everyone, everything and every person requires the same nutrients. You need energy, protein, salt, um, vitamins, minerals and things. It just depends on your age, growth stage, uh, reproductive status and work level, whether you need this much or you need more. So because every horse needs the same nutrients, just different amounts, all you have to do is feed more omega-3, whether it's a work stallion in breeding season or um, a racehorse in tense work or an inventor or a show jumper, um, they what they just need more um, and the smaller horses because even in the NRC you notice most nutrients are given per kilogram body weight so the nutrients are the same. So what the advantages of this are that if you're feeding um, you know not working a horse every day and you're changing the diet a little bit on work days or during the competition season you can keep the all four feet constant so you're not changing um, the nutrient supply and all you need to do is add more fiber and extra energy and in some cases if the horses are intense work you might use more salt but you can adjust the um, energy the oats and the oil according to the workload on that day or, and the day after or before but you can just keep those other fundamental nutrients the same um, so that's a, a big advantage of it the other thing we see a lot of um, which is quite concerning is when people use prepared feeds um, plus supplements or they're using multiple different prepared feeds uh, for different times of day or different da day different days of the week we're getting seeing a lot of overlap in the in the supplements in nutrients like selenium and iodine, and that's really quite dangerous. And 
The problem with selenium and iodine toxicity, the, the symptoms are the same as in a deficiency. And also the symptoms are what you see in a lot of things. So for selenium, chronic selenium toxicosis, you just see hoof weaknesses, um, poor quality wall and unexplained, um, not always lameness, just tenderness in the feet. Now there's so many things that can cause that. So one of the real advantages with awful feet is you <clears throat> don't need to use any multiple different supplements. So there's no overlap, the levels are correct. There will be times when you might need more salt or um, more vitamin E or ma ma magnesium and your vet can advise you on that. But as your basic general feeding day in, day out for all horses, you don't need to add multiple different supplements to try and cover all the nutrients and vitamins they need. And you don't need a different feed for each type of horse, whether it's in hard work or light work, you can adjust your energy um, intakes according to work level. And as the work increases, you can increase the amount of awful feet, but you've just got that basic foundation um, solid. And so it's suitable for all horses, growing horses, breeding stallions, um, you know, uh, stakes, race winners, World Cup show jumpers, because they just change the amounts of nutrients. Um, so it's a really useful feed in the stable. And as I said, you can adjust energy and salt, which will vary between the workload and the weather, etc. but you've still got your basic nutrition correct and you're not overlapping things. Um, as an equine veterinarian, one of my passions is, is clinical problems in horses. Um, and so the awful feed, because it doesn't contain any starch or grains, so awful feed's based on vegetable protein meals, soy, canola, linseed, um, and some other vegetable protein meals. So it's not based on Mill Run, Pollard, Bran, which a lot of uh, prepared feeds are. Now, Mill Run and Bran and Pollard and Mill Mix, or um, there's a whole lot of other words for it. But basically, it's a grain byproduct. So it is does have starch and sugar in it. And the starch and sugar, you know, we used to, you know, some of us has horses that would react badly if they had any oats. Um, or certain feeds that make them, you know, difficult to manage and um, stressed and not themselves. And we used to think that was just the fluctuating blood glucose caused by the um, high energy feeds, the starch and sugar in them. But the recent research in the biome, we're now realising that those starches, when they're fermented, um, they form acid in the gut so we can get ulcers all along the gut. And they also cause, you know, they can cause girthy, girthiness and just... Um, behavior changes and and that's because of low-grade pain and discomfort so one of the great things about awful feet is it doesn't it's not based on any starch or sugar it's just vegetable protein meals and which it gives you a beautiful amino acid array as well so for horses that um, are sensitive to starch and sugar on their con you know they're completely contraindicated in the diet like PPD PPID, EMS, insulin resistance, laminitis, obesity, the developmental orthopedic syndrome, um, tying up, whether it's PSSM1 or 2 or um, recurrent exertional rhabdomyolysis, they all benefit as well. So again, you can, not only are you reducing the risk of these things in horses, but it's, it's really good for horses that have any of these conditions. And we've collected um, a lot of the trial cases we've done and there's some you know, before and after pictures and, you know, a lot of these animals are owned by vets and farriers and dentists um, and that's their honest response to them. So we're pretty excited about that. And as I said, if you want to check out the testimonies, you can find them on the website. And the other thing we do, uh, I think I mentioned that we're seeing a lot of horses that when they're fed different feeds or a couple of different supplements or a manufactured feed plus a couple of supplements and research from, from around the world has found some people feed up to 10 supplements a day. So it's a bit like cooking, you know, if you just sort of chuck in a whole lot of different ingredients, you're probably not going to end up with um, the best balance best recipe and it's pretty much the same when you're building bodies and repairing bodies. So we do a lot of um, clinical nutrition and while there are a lot of sort of standard generic spreadsheets and you know the benefit of those is they take the tedium out of trying to manually calculate um, amounts but 
Um, they're based on RC values from over 10 years ago. Uh, and as such, they, they, those NRC values are applicable to less than 50% of the horse population because they don't consider breed, work level, um, individual requirements. So because um, our passion is, is nutrition and bringing the science to the feed bin, we like to do uh, look at the role of nutrition in the prevention and management of diseases, which, which is how we've fine-tuned our diets with an understanding of the genetics, the physiology, biochemistry, pathology of a lot of disease states and how individual nutrients can affect those. And also on the different requirements of individual horses, because it's not just not one size fits all <coughs> for feeding or for requirements. So again, we'd like to, you know, like you to make use of this. Um, and I'll certainly be, you know, if you do submit a diet analysis form, we'll get back, I'll, I'll be doing it and you'll be talking to me afterwards and I'll write the report. Um, if you have something urgent, though, we will, you know, put you, prioritise you so we can help as soon as possible. And the link for that's on our website too. As I mentioned earlier, we do take nutrition um, and what we put into the horses in the view of feed contaminants and um, analysed levels of nutrients very seriously. So we do use... Um, facilities that are a license audited, audited a couple of times a year by the APVMA, which is the Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority, and they have quite strict guidelines on um, compliance and good manufacturing practice. The ISO is an international organisation which specifies standards for different um, human aspects of life, right through to baby's car seat to bike helmets and also to manufacturing of fees for horses so you can contact us directly or you know look on the website as well